so <clears throat> we are now going to start with a new chapter called as corporate valuation also called as business valuation in the book you will find the name afm book you will find the name called as business valuation uh, uh, you can also call it as a corporate valuation both are same so in our notes i kept the name as a corporate valuation okay so corporate valuation chapter learning objectives are very less but there will be good amount of problems and nice concepts that we are going to learn in this particular chapter called as corporate valuation you properly do all the questions in the workbook take any number of questions given in the past exams just like that you will solve because the idea and the essence of uh, the entire business valuation chapter i kept in the form of i think 30 problems will be there let us see how many problems are there 27 27 questions will be there 27 questions of corporate valuation if you do in the question bank i kept another 20 questions extra repeated type of questions eh? no great creativity repeatedly same question numbers will change so if you do properly these 27 questions 27 different models of questions i have do clear everyone so first write down the learning objectives in your notes keep the heading chapter number in our uh, classes it is chapter 3 book it is chapter 4 in our classes it is chapter 3 what is the name corporate valuation or business valuation you put business valuation ah uh, first i want to ask you one question after this what is the next chapter we are going to begin bond valuation that also will complete we complete share valuation mergers uh, business bonds once all these complete in a portfolio we will learn as a whole are you understanding so keep the heading business valuation or corporate valuation write the learning objectives okay completed completed copying all the learning objectives and again at the beginning of the chapter i am telling to everyone 
don't see the answers answer book was given for your future reference not for classroom reference clear classroom la don't open any answers write down all the notes in the class anyway theory notes theory whatever we have to write i am skipping anyway because book is already there problems don't do any kind of mistake clear everyone so let's begin so learning objectives need for the chapter basic share valuation two stage dividend model eva mva free cash flows la again two types free cash flow for firm free cash flow for equity and again in the two types general approach per share approach and miscellaneous okay learning objectives are very small easy but concepts are very complicated to understand great deal of new things we are going to learn let's see the chapter okay shall we uh, first point number 1 why this chapter what could be the possible need okay see here i will ask you one question answer uh, see here we are doing the valuation of a business for example a person wanted to buy a share how he will do the valuation of a share present value of all the future dividends that he is going to get discount to the today's value he will value the share the value what he get is the mps of fair value he will compare it with what market value if the market value is lesser he will buy more he will not buy this is what he will do no i am not just buying a share one company wanted to merge with another company one company one company want to merge. merge with another company when merger is going on between two companies i just don't want to value the share i wanted to value the company as a whole we already just completed the chapter merger acquisition yes, now observations required how good we are in connecting mergers chapter with business valuation try to understand this mergers la we have done so many questions different different models we have done okay undiluted eps we have done undiluted mps we have done valuation mpa mps eps nav basis cash offer share offer cash offer versus share offer so many models probability models also we have done in the class yesterday only we have done na? probability variety variety questions we have done horrible exam questions also we have done i covered past rtp mtp past exam study material everything we have done we completed now the question after doing so many things i have one small question to ask whenever in mergers chapter we have to calculate the swap ratio how we will calculate the swap general general basis you tell either nav we will use or eps we will use or mps we will use correct ah there is yet another way of valuing that's called as a free cash flow model which model Yeah. different model from all those clear everyone that means i will not value on the basis of mpsc eps what i will calculate free cash, free cash flow i will calculate then how the swap ratio will be calculated till now in exam they didn't apply business valuation with mergers two different different chapters they are operating mergers questions are separate business valuation or corporate valuation is separate i don't think that they will ask like that in new syllabus new syllabus la definitely papers are gonna be very 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 tough and standardized what he will do essentially why only nav why only eps why only mps they will give, they will ask you to first calculate fcff for both the companies on the basis of fcff they may ask you to calculate swap then what will be the formula fcff of selling company by fcff of purchasing company like that a question is not tested till now but there is a chance they can merge two chapters what are those mergers, mergers and business valuation we completed mergers huh? now we complete business valuation four days it will take to complete all the 30 problems in the material we will do 30 30 different types of questions we will do ism rtp past exam mtp everything we will cover after that let us see 
how we can merge mergers chapter with the business valuation why to value business first to tell me what is the value of any asset future cash flows discount rate required rate what is the value of a share present value of future dividends what is the value of a bond present value of future interest future what is the value of entire company present value of future all cash flows that means when you are valuing a share only dividends if is enough to value them only dividends. dividends are enough if you are valuing only bonds interest analysis is enough but i am valuing a company dividend interest only you should not see you should start seeing from the sales listening or not from what we need to analyze from the sales we need to analyze the chapter clear everyone i wanted to value only the share what is enough dividend analysis is enough i wanted to value only bonds interest analysis is enough i am valuing only share only bond a entire company yeah. company means only bonds and shares huh? so many cash flows will be there or not that's why see the uh, screen once how questions will come i will show you this is ism question new ism la i have taken this afm ism uh, question from sales devila see here revenues cost of goods sold like this from sales revenue means what sales from sales they will give info again again variety variety questions will come torture questions are there in the book properly if you do and again i will tell you one point i am a uh, whenever i am i am a person who have to value for example i am given with an assignment of valuing a company outside you go to anyone if you are working in any office maybe you might have done valuation for startups have you ever heard startup startup companies shares will issue venture capitalists will inv will invest in that startup clear ah huh? at that time what we need to calculate a price per share startup has to calculate who has to startup, startup has to calculate what price per, price per share in order to quote to the venture capitalist venture capitalist came startup company is there it said my share price is 15000 do you know how the startup prices will be per share 18000 20000 15000 like that they will put because it's a private limited company market values will not be there what will not be there market answer market will not be there therefore they will give limited shares only if it is a public company na scattered shares will be there private limited company la what will be there hardly 10 15% will be there means startup company want 80 crore how much 80 crore the entire 80 crore will be given by a little amount of group of people then why to issue lakhs of shares share price will be very big number of shares will be very less that's why always startup company share prices are very huge listening ah uh, number 1 tell me venture capitalist came i said share price 15000 immediately will tell oh 15000 uh, take like that he will not give venture capitalist will appoint a registered valuer will appoint a registered valuer that person will analyze the company's futuristic sales futuristic costs futuristic ebit futuristic ebt futuristic eat futuristic eps futuristic dps and then he will value the company clear everyone see the question here i am not going to analyze anything now i wanted to show the gravity and magnitude of importance of this chapter in the real life scenario this chapter is not a theory chapter practically outside people are doing if you are working in office na please ask your principal auditor tomorrow only or else you will forget sir valuation of startups or any valuation the today's scenario using what model world is valuing with no stretch of imagination they will tell free cash flow clear that's why that became the darling of valuations 
that was kept in one of the chapter in the new syllabus as well in the name called as business valuation in that chapter fcff clear ism la there are four questions i kept eight questions in that four ism questions i kept four mtp rtb questions i kept additionally repeated way of questions are there with a change in numbers in the question bank i kept 69 questions in this chapter reasoning we will be coming with the question bank also very soon almost the last one chapter is only pending once that is also ready i will put it before you shall we start doing the chapter observe these square numbers observe these numbers what is this year answer yeah but we are expecting perpetually up to 2014 stable uh, sorry variable 8% 8% growth will be there after that perpetually it will grow at 6% means we are taking the present and estimating the future forecasting the future that's how the valuations will be done clear everyone in the class clear deepika padukone invested in a company f okay f e there is a company she invested in the company that company is now going for winding up almost insolvent gone do you know why fcff lo wrong valuations are done means try to understand clearly huge value they have shown she is a venture capitalist for that company invested later their estimates on what basis they valued are not happening actually they estimated some revenues their actual revenues are not matching them gone are you understanding the point clearly yeah another i will tell another name name i didn't remember if you remember the name you can tell me online doctor consultancy app was also created by one person 18 million dollars they raised i am forgetting the names some easy doctor huh? something i didn't remember the name two person started a company okay they started a company startup in bangalore because that's a startup hub for india gada bangalore they started there venture capitalists came huge quotation they have given on the basis of fcff fcff is a model how beautifully you use that depends on that depends on the value you are valuing it clear everyone sir for example p not equal to d1 by k minus g that's a formula don't blame the formula for your mistakes what formula will do if you put input i will give output if your inputs are wrong output will be wrong fcff is bad don't tell valuer is wrong yes, listening or not so here the problem is not with the idea problem is with the ideology idea is correct astrology is right astrologer may be wrong astrology is a science it's correct astrologer may be wrong idea is correct ideology framing person may be wrong model is correct person who is using that is may be wrong so don't blame fcff for the wrongs then fcff is a model yeah you put the numbers input output will be given you are giving bad input how the good input will come sorry good output will come if your input is right output will be right you are estimates when you are inputting the estimates for the next 5 years your estimates are beyond imagination exorbitant estimates they have given then output also will be like that but the real real life la when you see in real time they are not generating that much cash flows flop they are closing that company now so like that so many startups in india are failing because of what wrong estimates in using fcff model listening ah uh, here tell me in this question what is the growth they estimated next to 4 year 10 11 12 13 14 how much 8% after that 6% maybe that may be wrong you should estimate 12% 6% you should not estimate you should estimate only 2.5 if your estimates are wrong input is wrong input is wrong output is wrong for that what i can do you should have used the model properly clear everyone in the class in this chapter these practical things we are going to analyze don't see this as a 4 marks 5 marks question we take it on a practical level of understanding i will show you the practical case studies what are happening outside because uh, we will be in startup venturing in our office startup ventures will be taken various startup ventures so we have seen practically 
I will show you some case studies, how we are going to do those. Then you will get a practical exposure as to how the valuations are done. Clear? Learning objectives. Now what are the learning objectives? Need for the chapter. First we need, this is a need for chapter. Till now what I said? Need for the chapter I said to you. What is the need? Valuing the business. Like valuing a share if there is a chapter. Valuing bonds if there is a chapter. For valuing the business also there should be a chapter. Hello. Yes, sir. For that one reason this chapter came. And this chapter is a performance evaluator. Performance evaluator. Sir, what do you mean by performance evaluator? Sir, new word. Listen. Whenever shareholders put their money, whenever shareholders put their money, they will think about two things. Number one, they should get the expected earnings. They should have the expected price. For example, a person is investing in the share. When he is investing, he will expect that I should get somewhere around, may not be exact, I am investing in 1000 shares here. At least every year, par value 100. Par value 100. Par value 100. I am investing in 1000 shares. What he is expect, what he will generally expect, I should get a dividend of around 20 rupees for each share. Means 20 percent. Listening, huh? that means company should at least give two types of satisfaction to the members, shareholders. Number one, dividend. Number two, cap. Number two, unrealized capital gain. What do you mean unrealized capital gain? Hike in the value of prices. P1 minus P0. I invested 1000, uh, 500. Price became 540. Very happy. Because I have a growth in price, I am also getting the dividend. Clear, huh? Answer. Uh, now tell me. I am expecting one earning. Whether company is performing to that level, or beyond that level, or below that level, there should be some indicator or not. How much? Listening. Not how much one shareholder is expecting. Overall, all the shareholders, on an average, expect some KE. K. K. So on an average, every investor may expect different, 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 different KE. On an average, one KE will be there or not. Whether really company is meeting that KE or not, how can I know? Using an evaluation model called as economic value added. What is it? Economic value added. Clear? Ah. I will see only earnings growth, also market price growth. Market price growth also shareholder will look. That's called as a market value added. That's called as a market value added. That's the two topics we are going to see. Earnings hike will be analyzed using EVA. Market price hike will be understood using a model called as MVA. MVA are two types will be there. I didn't write here. But in the problems we will do. New AFM booklet there are one problem also given on that. General market value added, shareholders value added. We will do both. Listening up to here, uh, please note down the first theory on this. Copy down. Don't see your notes. Introduction only you need to copy. Everyone in the live also, please put a message. Understood up to here clearly. So once you write this need for the chapter, then we will be going into the first uh, 
primitive way of corporate valuation will be similar to share valuation chapter beginning problems i am talking about the first primitive basic problems will be similar after two three problems new concepts will start completed everyone those who are the notes also please write down intro you have to write completed can you go into the questions okay see here <clears throat> just now intro we started i am telling you once again we are valuing what business. business business means not just valuing a share it is valuing a share it is valuing the bonds it is valuing entire company as a whole therefore 
slowly we will go into the problem models first we will calculate shares next we will calculate the bond next we will calculate both next we will be calculating the concept of fcff okay question la already they will only give fcff to us we will value the value of the company using fcff last type la we will be calculating the fcff itself i repeat one more time first shares next debt not just bonds debt first Share. shares debt, debt. debt. total of both debt and equity we will calculate one way next we will value already in the question they will give fcf values just we will value the company on the base of given information last style uh, fcf also you don't give everything you all you should do those questions will come for 10 to 12 marks in exam fcf given 5 marks fcf not given complicated question came 12 marks fcf not given moderate question came 8 marks so weightage of this chapter can run from 8 marks to 20 marks in exam in one of the recent attempts means november 2022 attempt uh, corporate valuation corporate valuation came for 18 marks in exam listening one 8 marks question one 5 marks question another 5 marks question totally how many questions three questions were asked totally 18 marks came from corporate valuation all the three problems came from the book i will show you what are the questions numbers change concept is same okay so that's why in the book i kept all the best problems from ism mtp and rtp properly you do that enough from the exams point of view once the question man come come extra problems also we will do okay see come to the questions regarding this chapter please come to the first question Okay. See here. Listen. Let us see the question first. First we are going to value what? Share. share say. First to two problems share. Next to problem also share. Variety question. When I say variety, not normal variety. One of its kind. Different way of question he asked for 12 marks in exam. First, first day, 90 mm rod. <laughs> so, see here. X limited. Just declared a dividend. Whenever I say just declared, D0 or D1? D0. D0. It's a D0. Just declared a dividend of 14 per share. Mr. B is planning to purchase the share of X limited, anticipating increase in the growth rate from 8% to 9%, which will continue for 3 years. He also expect market price of the share to be 360 after 3 years. Question 1. Calculate maximum amount Mr. B should pay for the shares if he requires a rate of return of 13% per annum. The maximum price Mr. B will be willing to pay for the share if he is of opinion that 9% growth can be maintained indefinitely and require 13% rate of return per annum. The price of the share at the end of 3 years, if the growth 9% growth rate is achieved, assuming other conditions remaining same as in point 0.2 above. 6 marks question already came in exam. ISM question also. Read the question properly. Try on your own first. Maximum 3 minutes time I am giving. 1 minute for each bit. Why? Because share valuation chapter we have already completed. Start doing. Everyone in live. You also start doing the answers.
another two minutes. last half minute Okay, see here. Done with the answer, at least try it. Huh? Uh, I will also do along with you. Please. Listen, what is the question number? One. Help me with the answers. First, tell me, how many bits he asked us to do? Three. Three. See here, time given for you. See here. Number one, tell me, this investor wanted to continue in the company for how many years? Three years. Tell me, Three years. his holding period will be? Three years. That means he will buy the share today, hold it for first year, second year, third year. At the end of third year, he will sell the share. First bit, he already given the share price at the end of third year. How much it is? 360. 360. What is the growth rate he is expecting for the next two, three years? 9%. Because already he said that growth will increase from 8 to 9 in the next two, three years. Correct? Ah? Tell the answers now. First, value of the share. Year, cash flow, PV at the rate of... Tell me. 1, 2... 3 and 3. Tell me, what is the first cash flow? 14 rupees is the just paid dividend for that 9%. 15 point? 15 point? Next. 16 point? 5 7. Huh? Others also please do. Uh, next. Sixteen point six three, yeah. Okay. Next. Sixteen point six three plus nine percent. One. Eighteen point one three. Correct. Ah, okay. Done. So next one. Three sixty. Tell the values. Six nine. Directly tell the answer. Two eighty-eight point five seven. Hello, everyone. Have you done up to here? 
ओके बिट नंबर वन ओवर बिट नंबर टू आई विल डू दिस फर्स्ट सी हि मैक्सीम प्रईज मिस्टर बी विल बी विलिंग टू पे फॉर द शेर इफ हि इज ऑफ ओपीनियन दैट नईन पर्सेंट ग्रोथ कैन बी मेन्टेन इंडेफिनेटली एंड रिक्वयर्ड ए रिटर्न ऑफ थर्टीन पर्सेंट पर आनम हाउ टू इंटरप्रेट दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट एल बी डूइंग आंसर ये एवरी पर्सन विल डू लाजिक यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड वाट इज द मीनिंग वाट इज द होलिंग पीरियड इन दिस बिट टू वाट इज द होलिंग पीरियड आंसर already i held today is my disposal time i will not hold for perpetual period i will live for perpetual time to hold it for perpetual period listening or not tell me what is the price i am expecting after 3 years i am not going to stay for 3 years i want to sell today itself today if i have to sell i have to take which dividends into consideration futuristic dividends into consideration are you understanding or not tell the value of the share What is D one? D zero into one plus G divided by K minus G. D zero, fourteen growth. K E. Tell fourteen into one point zero nine. Two six a divided by four percent. Everyone got this answer. Everyone got this answer, but you didn't understand the question properly. That's what the problem is. AFM la problem is everyone will do after doing so many. Arey share valuation we have done thirty, thirty five types of problems we have done. After doing so many problems, you will do the answer. But how you understood and done is the main point here. In reality, what is the meaning of that second bit? I already held for some number of years. He didn't give about past. Today I wanted to sell. Today want to sell. Today when I am selling, what I am going to uh, lose all the perpetual dividends in future. That's why we calculated. Listening everyone. Next, what is the difference between bit one and bit two? Don't tell value difference. Difference I am asking. In bit one we are buying today, huh? Holding it for three years and selling after three years. Second bit, already I bought long back. I hold it for some number of years. Now I am going to sell. That's the difference. Understood? Yes, Next bit number three. Third bit variety bit. He is asking a value at the end of third year. P three he is asking. He is he is not asking today's value. Yes, First bit la what he has asked? Hold for three years and sell. Second bit la what he has? Sell today. Third bit la what he is asking? Price only after three years you calculate variety bit. Uh, tell me, we want what P one na P two or P three ya? P three depends on D four divided by K minus G. Why present value of any asset is okay? Any value of any asset is present value of future cash flows. Tell me what is the D four? Correct ah. Uh, already we calculated. What is the D three? K E. Numerator. Four ninety four point zero. That's all. Copy down. Have you got these answers, everyone? See here. Copy down this.
completed. Let us move on to the second question. I said, and I am repeating the same. Share valuation chapter la share valuation e work. Therefore, small questions will be there, big questions will be there, everything will be there. In this chapter, our work is not share valuation. Share valuation is one of the work. Therefore, second problem is direct. See, very good question. Let us see what is the question and its theme. I will give you five minutes time for you to solve this as well. Let us read. Civil Corporation, a manufacturer of do it yourself hardware and housewares, reported a EPS of Euro 2.1 in 2003, on which it paid a DPS of Euro 0.69. Earnings are expected to grow 15% a year from 2004 to 2008. During this period, dividend payout ratio is expected to be remain unchanged. After 2008, earnings growth rate is expected to drop to a stable rate of 6% and the payout ratio is expected to increase to 65% of the earnings. The firm has a beta of 1.4 currently and is expected to have a beta of 1.1 after 2008. The market risk premium is 5.5, treasury bond rate is 6.25. What is the expected price of the stock at the end of 2008? What is the value of the stock using two-stage dividend discount model? Super question, eh? enjoy. Try. What is the name of the company? What it is manufacturing? Sorry, do it yourself. First to do. Correct question he asked. Students in live batch also, please do that and put the photo. Let me see how you are uh, doing the answers.
लाइव बैच स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो प्लीज पार्टिसिपेट आर यू डूइंग दैट पुट ए मैसेज done uh, time up time up time up please listen have you tried doing it live batch students please put an answer how much you got i think online students are also doing it they are also not responding seriously they might be doing <laughs> struggling for answer another 2 minutes max please complete it fast how much chance you got chitra vichitra answer <laughs> how much you got any answer no 
for you Four point disaster. <laughs> disaster. Disaster answer. How much you got? Did you get any answer, Jack? Did you get any answer? No? K. K. L. <laughs> In this problem, if there is anything to do, that is K. E. Bro, how much you got? Did you do that answer? Doing you? You? Two? More. That much also will not come. Bo both persons are in extremes. One person is too low, four rupees. Another 270, too much high. Ah, that's what I want to tell. From this, what is the moral of the story about this chapter? You might have understood now. First problem starting, starting, this, pro this chapter will start with the high range. Why? Because share violation already we have done. But still this is a question mark. Shall I do? Uh, now you help me with the answers properly. First, help me with numbers. Question number two. Live batch, are you sleeping or what? Respond something. Why group is dormant? I think. Pray live students answer something. Trying. Okay, try. Try and try. Until you succeed. Sir, okay. Let me answer this. See here. First point number one. How many periods are considered here? Two types of periods are there. Number one, variable growth rate. Number two, stable growth rate. Two types of periods are given. See the question. Okay. So, see the screen. See the screen. Step one. Calculation of KE. You have done that successfully. See the screen. <laughs> See the screen. What is the formula? KE equal to RM minus R. What is RF given? Uh, listen, this is variable growth period. This is stable growth. Variable growth given RF, stable growth another RF was given. <coughs> Beta na RF was changed. Okay, okay, beta. So now tell me, what is the RF? 6.25. Bond rate. Treasury bond. KE also wrong. <laughs> KE also wrong. KE also wrong. They have taken 5.5. 5.5 is market risk premium. RF is what? Risk free. Treasury means RBI bonds. Uh, plus, what is the beta? 1 point? 4. Uh, RM minus RF? 5.5. Value. No, no, no. That is market risk premium. He has already given. Uh, tell the value. 6.25 plus 1.4 into 5.5. Total. 13.95. Next, stable growth period. KE equal to RF plus beta into RM minus RF. RF plus beta. 
1 point 1 5.5 value 12 point 5 5 ah hey tell correctly Twelve point three. Yeah. First step, everyone understood clearly. Yeah. Hello. First step, everyone understood. Do it. Write down. Step one. Calculation of KE. Step one. Calculation of KE. Done up to here. Make it fast. Shall I go to the next step? <clears throat> step 2. Listen. What is the new point in this question? Nothing new. Already we have done problems of this kind in share violation chapter. This problem is again concentrating on changed payout ratio. I told you. Growth means what growth? EPS la growth at DPS la. G equal to 8%. A person has said. Growth 8%. Growth 8 means growth in EPS or growth in DPS? Answer. Growth in A growth means growth in both EPS as well as DPS if the company follows same payout ratio. I told you this in introduction classes or not. That's all. What grade he is asking even in this question same? If the payout ratio is changing, growth is a growth only in the earnings, not on dividends. We have done the problems here, nothing new. Shall we do? Write down first. Calculation of. Write down. Write down along with me. Step 2. Calculation of. Current dividend payout ratio. Dividend payout percentage equal to DPS by EPS into 100. See the question and tell me what is the DPS this year? On what EPS? Write down. point one. 32.9 ah huh? two digits lo you tell 86 ah huh? uh, two digits lo you tell 32.86 percent up to here everyone got the answer next step three step three shall we continue uh, this i will do and i will give time for you to copy just put the heading and leave valuation Valuation. Help me with the numbers. Please don't do along with me. See the screen once. Year. Next. No. EPS. DPS. 
PV at the rate of, tell me how much we need to take? 13.25 we should take, 12.3 we should take is a question now. Answer? Wrong. We should take 13.95 only for the entire question. Only for the last year we should take 12.3. Do you know why? Listen. 13.95 is the PV factor we have to consider because valuation you are doing today. Yes. Share is value today and in future. Today, today. today we are expecting future cash flows. Today what is the KE? 13.95. Okay. Now you should tell I should listen. Year 1. I mean which year he started investing? 2003. So next year will become which year? 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2008. Hello, listening. Tell me when he wanted to buy the share? Today. Hold it for how many years? Five years. At the end of fifth year, what he will do? Sell. Therefore, I want P 2004 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8. Or. Hey. We wanted to sell the share in which year? Yeah? 2001 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 or 8. Or. Therefore, we want P 2008. P? That's the first question he asked. That's the first question he asked. Total value he asked in the second question. See the screen. Uh, what is the EPS for the next year? You tell me growth. What is the growth here? See the question. From 2004 to 8, what is the growth? Tell. EPS. Tell ya. Yeah. Two digits you close. Two point? Four two. Four, two uh. Next. Fast, fast, fast. Two point? Next. 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 4 point? 4 Stop there. First five years. On that, what is the payout? Multiply and tell and counter it with two decimals and tell the answer. Point? 7, 9. Next. Point? 9, 1. Next. 0, 5, uh? next. 2, next. Stop there. Stop there. Listen carefully now. Answer to my question. We want value at the end of which year? 2008. Formula. Tell me. Tell, tell, tell. D 2009 divided by K minus G. D2009 can be written as 2008 into 1 plus G divided by K minus G. Wrong. You should not do like this. I told you very clearly. Payout ratio changed or not changed? Or changed. Listening. Payout ratio is changing from which year? 2008 onwards, payout ratio is changing. Then, listen carefully. What is D2008? 1.39. Answer, yeah. This 1.39 came by applying a payout of 65%, 32.86%. Then how can you do that? So you cannot directly do. If you apply growth of, how much is the growth in the perpetual period? No, no, no. Are you are not reading question. How much? 6. Perpetual period 6. So if you apply 1.39 into 1.06, you are applying growth to what? I repeat one more time. You didn't understand. Listen. No, no. Listen carefully again. What is 1.39? What is 1.39? Payout. 1.39. Dividend, not payout. Dividend for the year 2008. Clear? That is obtained by applying a payout of how much? 32.86. If you are taking that to perpetuity, what will happen? You are taking payout of 32.86 to perpetuity. But perpetuity will be obtained by applying which payout? 65, not 32.86. That's a wrong number one. Shall I tell what is the second wrong? Tell me. 
What is 1.39? 2008 to 2005, leave off. Leave off. What is 1.39? Tell, tell me what it is. Sir. Dividend. Dividend. On that, what you are applying? Growth. Wrong. Because payout ratio is changed. When payout is changed, growth is the growth in earnings only, not on dividends. When payout ratio is changed, growth means growth not in DPS, growth only in EPS. But you are applying on DPS, which is wrong. So tell me now, what is the earnings of 2008? D 2009, see the screen, D 2009 can be written as E 2009 into payout ratio. E 2009 can be written as E 2008 into 1 plus G. Whenever payout ratio is changed, growth means growth in EPS, not on DPS. Therefore, apply on EPS. Okay? Tell me. Into payout ratio of 65. What is the... One second. What is the E 2008? Growth. Four point two two into one point zero six into sixty five percent. Two point nine one na. Two point nine one. Uh, how you got two point nine one? How you got two point nine one? First four point two two is what? Earnings. Earnings into what? Growth. Growth. It will give you E two thousand nine. Into payout ratio will become the dividend. Okay. Whole divided by KE. KE, KE. 12.3%, not 13.95. 12.3 minus, uh, tell me. 6%. 2.91 divided by. 46 point? 1 9. Uh? Uh, 46.19 apply 13.95 PV factor three digits next seven seven Huh? Six seven six, six, seven, six, six seven. Next. Five nine Five two. Multiply until the final answer. Click M plus. 0.79 into 0 0.878. 0 0.91 into 0.770. Put the M plus. Properly calculate. Don't make mistakes in valuation. Twenty seven point six one. Correct? 27.61. Everyone got the answer? Uh, now tell me, this all calculations we have already done in the share valuation chapter or not? Nothing new. But variety, guys, they asked the question, changing the growth, changing the uh, KE, changing the payout ratio, all are changed in the question. Therefore, it seems to be like difficult, but not. Again, I am repeating this point, listen, basics are always valuable. Whenever I say growth, growth is a growth in both earnings and dividend. If the company follow, same payout ratio. If the company changes the payout, growth is growth in earnings only, not on dividends. Clear everyone? So therefore, 
see here now i will ask a question answer what is the eps of 2004 what is the eps of 2005 what is the growth 15%. answer 15%. now take calculator everyone Point nine one minus point seven nine divided by point seven nine into hundred. Fifteen, almost. These are uh, approximated, na. So how much answer you got? Fifteen. What is the moral of the story? Growth in earnings is the growth in dividend because you are following constant payout for the first five years. Listening, ah. Uh, next, tell me. If you change the payout, automatically what will change? Payout will change. That's all. Earnings growth will not change. Listening. So tell me, growth means what? Growth in dividends or earnings? Sir? Growth in both. If company follows same payout, if the company changes the payout, growth means growth in earnings only. When payout is changed and the growth is only growth in earnings, how can you apply growth on dividends? Therefore, we will calculate EPS. Apply growth on that. On that, we apply the payout ratio. That's how we need to do. Already same concept I said in share valuation chapter, but not this much complicated. Clear, everyone? Yes. Yes. This is the second question you have done. Copy down. Second directly the schedule you copy. First, you copy down the schedule. Q two means question two answer. Q one. Q1 is a normal answer he asked. 46.19 is a Q1. This is a Q2. What is P2008 and 2004? 2008 is Q1. 46.19. 27.63 is a P2004 value today.
copied the answer. Uh, third one, you copy this. Calculation of price at the end of year, 2008. We should apply growth on what? Earnings, not on dividends. That's why EA 2018 to 1 plus G. Clearly, I have given there Q1. That's the answer for question 1. Completed writing. So, with this, we completed how many questions in business valuation? Two questions we have done. Another 25 different types of questions are still there. Slowly, we will do our four days. Excluding today, four days will take. Slowly, let us complete this chapter to the fullest. All the questions we will do, 25 extra questions are there, we will do those. Once question man come, another 10 extra questions also we will do, which are unique in nature. Repetitive we need not do, that's for your self-practice. Non-repetitive, any new questions are there, we will also solve them. Clear? So with this, we will stop the today's class. Tomorrow's session we are going to do more number of problems on share valuation only. Variety questions we are going to do. Clear everyone? So, thank you very much. Meet again in the next session. Good night. Live by students also, very good night. Uh, tomorrow's session will continue with the remaining part.